Welcome to the Elite Dangerous Universe, Commander. My name is Drew Wager, one of the official authors who contributed to the narrative of the game. If you want a guide to the lore, you've come to the right place. This is the story of Jasmina Halsey. Jasmina Halsey is a curious and somewhat tragic figure in the pantheon of notable entrants in galactic history. She was president of the Federation and predecessor to the infamous Zachary Hudson. Prior to 3300, her time in office had been undistinguished, with few notable events occurring. However, she first came to wider public attention due to an unfortunate association with a narcotic known as Onion Head, passing legislation to make it illegal throughout the Federation. Onion Head was the fruit of an alien plant that was known only to grow on the planet Panim in a Capifornacia system. Farmers on the planet lodged protests, claiming the drug was harmless and mere fun. Shortly afterwards, however, the crop fields on the planet were bombarded from orbit, resulting in some civilian casualties. Halsey denied responsibility, claiming one of her admirals was acting without permission. The event, known as Onion Gate, critically undermined Halsey's authority and brought the previously obscure Shadow President Zachary Hudson to the fore, as he made a point of supporting the Admiral in question, and by connection, the Federation military. Hudson began to make several highly visible speeches which were generally critical of Halsey in all respects. Combined with her office being forced to increase taxes during her tenure, these events led to a rapid decline in her popularity and her government becoming embroiled in crisis after crisis, including crackdowns on outlying federal systems potentially looking to secede from the Federation's control. In 3301, she was embroiled in the Battle for Lou, where a rebel organisation, the Crimson State Group, battled for independence from the Federation. This war cost many lives on both sides, with the end result being an uneasy stalemate. Hudson stepped up his own campaign to have her removed from office. In May 3301, Halsey embarked on a tour of federal frontier systems in a bid to increase her approval ratings and fend off continued criticism of her handling of galactic affairs. Her ship, Starship One, sometimes referred to as Spaceflight One, was reported missing a few days later, having not arrived at its destination with available telemetry indicating some kind of explosive hyperspace failure. The loss of the ship was oddly reminiscent of a previous failed hyperspace jump conducted by a cruise ship known as the Antares 50 years earlier. Both incidents involved an unexpected surge of power to the hyperdrive system just prior to making their fateful jumps. Despite a widespread search, no wreckage was found, Speculation ran rampant for many weeks, but the official explanation was that the ship had suffered a devastating technical failure in its hyperdrive unit, destroying the vessel in transit. Within weeks, a vote of no confidence in Halsey's government was carried out, and Zachary Hudson became the new president of the Federation. A few crackpot organisations continued to claim Halsey had been abducted by aliens, but few gave such wild theories any serious consideration. One of the most notable commentators of the period was a conspiracy theorist called Ricardo Bentonio, whose broadcasts were unaccountably popular in certain circles. During August of 3301, the late Vice President Nigel Speeton's files were examined revealing a concealed data chit, throwing further light into the circumstances of the original Antares incident. The information revealed by investigating authorities showed that the whereabouts of the Antares might be located, and a search was organised in December of that year. Wreckage was recovered from a vast search area and returned to the Sirius organisation for analysis, and in January 3302 it was confirmed that some of the wreckage found was from the doomed cruise vessel, lost for 50 years. Findings led to calls for similar searches to be conducted for Halsey's ship, Starship One, and the search was organised almost immediately. By February of 3302, the search had not only found the wreckage, but also a significant number of escape pods 
with their occupants still alive in suspended animation. It was soon confirmed that one of the escape pods contained Jasmina Halsey herself, who had survived the destruction of Starship One. Her condition was described as critical but stable, and she was being kept in an induced coma to aid her healing. Political speculation as to whether she might return to office started immediately, and by March, medics reported that Halsey could be brought out of her coma. One of Jasmina's first visitors was her sister Azalea, who reported that Jasmina spoke about curious things such as stars and creation, but seemed otherwise normal despite her injuries. Halsey was able to talk to the media shortly afterwards, and the following is a direct transcript of her spoken words. I remember very little, really. A thunderous noise, and then silence. Being thrown across the bridge in my chair, and then being unable to breathe. I remember one of the bodyguards getting me to the pod as things floated about silently, like a dream. The last thing I remember is a terrible pain in my ears, and a very loud noise as the pod filled with what looked like steam. Press reports of the time suggested that the former president's voice was distant, and she seemed to drift off between sentences. She certainly did not sound like the forceful leader from the previous year. A reporter from the Alliance Tribune asked President Halsey what it was like to drift through space for so long, to which Halsey responded with, It was wonderful. Amazing. I saw the universe and our galaxy within it, as I'd never seen it before. And I felt the presence of the real caretakers of our galaxy, the paradox of their existence, tiny yet gargantuan, fleeting yet eternal. They spoke to me as I drifted in the void. It was amazing. I must share their message. Halsey later claimed to have seen the true architects of creation, and that these beings showed her the infinities of the cosmos. Many regarded her as mentally unstable as a result of these declarations, but that didn't stop her making a call for independent pilots to bring her vast quantities of exploration data. In response, she was quoted as saying, They are out there. I have seen them. We must put aside our petty differences and work together to establish contact. There was so much we could learn from them. Halsey underwent psychiatric review in May of 3302 and was admitted to a secure facility for extended care and review by the establishment. Ricardo Bentonio called it out as a cover-up and demanded that Halsey be allowed to speak without her carers or government aides present. Several small protest organisations appeared briefly across the galaxy, claiming that they were seeking Halsey's architects, which they claimed was a non-human sentience that pervaded the galaxy. Halsey was later released, and became involved in peace activism, later effectively defecting to the Alliance. By 3304, she had become an advisor to the Alliance president, Edmund Mahon. However, by 3307, the Halsey affair had pretty much dropped off the radar for most of the pundits. But it was brought back to the limelight with the revelation that Fleet Admiral Lucas Vincent had been found to have ordered the sabotage of Starship One. Halsey testified at his court hearing. Halsey was cross-examined and accused of being delusional due to her previous comments about the architects and caretakers of the galaxy, but Lucas Vincent was ultimately found guilty. Eventually, Halsey returned to the Federation, becoming part of the diplomatic corps and an ambassador to the Alliance, a position she still holds to this day. No further reference to the strange vision she had has been made. Conspiracy theorists still debate the experience to this day, wondering if Halsey truly did encounter some kind of ephemeral alien sentience during her experience. However, the generally accepted view is that the visions were the result of post-traumatic stress disorder and can be safely discounted. One thing is certain. Only Jasmina Halsey knows for sure. <laughs>